Grace, mercy and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord be with you and also with you. Uh, you're very welcome to St Commonwealth Church this morning for our online uh, Sunday service. This is Sunday the 10th of January. I just want to thank you for, for joining us today. Uh, we are in the middle uh, of, well we were hoping that we were uh, near the end of, but we seem to be in the middle of are approaching the peak of what is a terrible uh, virus and we are all now seeing cases rise uh, there are people that we know of that are being uh, directly impacted uh, heavily by this virus and so this is a very real and a very difficult time for us all so I just want to thank you for making the choice uh, to tune in uh, to worship God uh, even though it's online uh, with your fellow uh, parishioners. I pray now that you, you know uh, that turning to God at this time is the thing to do in these circumstances. Uh, and I want to challenge you even today and encourage you, uh, if there's one thing you do at this time uh, in this period of lockdown, is to pray. Uh, if there is ever a time for you to, to test, to improve, uh, and to develop your prayer life, your relationship with God, it is now. Uh, the message from this pulpit and this church, as you know, is that we have a God who is in control. He's in control over all. He's in control over this virus. No matter what shape the world's in, no matter what our circumstances, God's in control. We also preach that we have a God who cares for each of us. He loves us so much that he sent his son for us. And we have a God who hears our prayers. So now is the time. If your relationship with God needs attention, and if you're like anybody else, it does, now is the time to test it and to improve it and to develop it. Now is not the time to spend more time on Netflix and Facebook, watching the news, giving off about the assembly. Now is the time to pray, folks. So I want to encourage you. Uh, there's a God there who's watching and waiting for you uh, to turn to him. We hope, of course, that we will be open again soon, hopefully at the start of February after lockdown is over, God willing, uh, we'll be back to in-church worship again. I also hope that uh, very soon we will be able to open midweek as well uh, for regular prayer meetings for those who would wish to be involved in that. Uh, prayer needs to be at the center of these churches. Prayer needs to be part of your life and my life. And we are going to take this opportunity this year, in the middle of this crisis, to put our individual and our collective spiritual lives before God. We are going to go to our mighty God in prayer. Let's take a moment now to pray as we begin our service. Let's pray. Lord God, as we are thrown into lockdown again, as we continue to be disrupted and shaken by all that we see and the experiences associated with this crippling virus, Lord, help us to turn to you. Lord, help us to turn to you in prayer. Help us to turn to you in devotion and through reading our Bibles. As so many more people are now suffering from this virus as there's so much more pressure on our schools on our NHS, on our businesses, on our homes, our families, on our elderly people. We ask that you help, Lord. We ask that you help those who are suffering at this time. We ask that you help those who are under pressure. Relieve and improve all those people who are going through the most difficult times at the moment. We ask that you can help us, Lord, spiritually, and practically, may we be people who pray for your help. And may you respond, Lord. Protect us and guide us. Help us and to help others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just before our opening hymn, I have a few announcements that I'd like to, to share with you now uh, as we begin our service. Obviously, lockdown uh, has now started, is in place, and this is the first of our online services again only uh, until probably the end of January, and hopefully we'll be opening again 
uh, in February. One thing that lockdown, the previous one, would have taught us is that church is not a building. Uh, that church is people. It's people who pray. It's people who look out for each other, who pick up the phone to one another. And uh, I encourage you to keep doing that. Keep praying. Keep speaking to each other as a congregation. And please let me know if there is anyone out there who needs some spiritual or practical support. Our Sunday school uh, is obviously uh, finished for, for Christmas period and will be not starting again for another uh, few weeks. There has been, this is, lockdown has a big impact for mothers and families, so uh, we're going to allow those folks a, a bit of time to readjust. Uh, and within, I would say, the third or fourth Sunday of, of January, we'll be starting up online Kids Zoom, our, our Kids Zone again uh, via Zoom. Uh, so please look out for that. Amanda will be in contact. Uh, we're also going to be starting now a new uh, sermon series uh, next, from next Sunday onwards. We're going to be looking at the book of Daniel. Uh, the book of Daniel is a, a wonderful story. You'll all be know about the fiery furnace and, and, uh, and, and the, the lion's den and things like that. But, but Daniel has a wonderful message for us all. Uh, courageous living for the Christian uh, in turbulent times. So we're going to be going through that in the coming weeks, uh, the coming next couple of months uh, together. Prayer, as I mentioned, uh, we are going to be setting up a prayer, regular prayer meeting now in church uh, whenever lockdown finishes, uh, not just because of all that we're going through at the, this present time, but really because uh, uh, prayer should be at the centre, the core of any church uh, really at its heart. So we're going to be uh, having an emphasis uh, on prayer going forward this year. And also, uh, you remember what we did this time last year, we looked at uh, each of us um, praying for five people in our lives through the year. I'm not too sure how you all got on with that last year, but uh, we're going to do it again this year. Uh, so I encourage you all to think of and pray about five key people in your lives. Uh, and try and pray for them uh, through the year. Finances, uh, just a, a, the slide on screen, just to allow you to take note of the drop-off times for this month, I think it's the 16th uh, of January, and then it's the 13th of February. So a couple of drop-off uh, dates for you going forward. Uh, we will also be reporting uh, uh, on our finances in the next few news as well uh, and giving you a bit more information of how we're getting on and how we're going to plan for the future off the back of that. Uh, last wee announcement for you is just uh, to say that Melanie is with us today and she's going to be preaching in our service uh, today but this is actually Mel's last Sunday with us. It's amazing these eight weeks or so, uh, or eight sessions she needs to be with us is now over uh, and today is her last day. It was intended that you would, many of you would be here and we could give Mel a proper send off. But because we can't do that, I'm going to say technically it's her last day, but she will be back with us as soon as we're re reopened, uh, hopefully in February. Uh, and that'll give us an opportunity to say goodbye to Mel properly and also to thank her properly as well. Uh, I'm sure you'll all have been encouraged by her preaching and her leading uh, over these weeks and you'll want to uh, encourage her and pray for her uh, going forward. So we'll get Mel back in again with us uh, in the coming weeks uh, to give her a proper send off. Uh, thank you for listening through all that. There's quite a bit of ground to cover there. Uh, so now we're just going to have our opening hymn, uh, which is How Great Is Our God.
We take a moment now to remember that before God we fall short of his glory and we have some scriptures on screen now from taken from Mark chapter 12. Jesus said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. We're mindful of course that we often don't love God the way we should and we don't love our neighbors the way we are asked to or called to do. So we confess together with the words on screen, beginning, most merciful God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on each and every one of us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our collect for today, which is the first Sunday after Epiphany. Eternal Father, who at the baptism of Jesus revealed him to be your son, anointing him with the Holy Spirit. Grant to us who are born of water and the Spirit that we may be faithful to our calling as your adopted children through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our scripture for today is taken from Psalm uh, chapter 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders, the Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon a skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Father God, as I speak in your word this morning, Please give me strength and voice to do justice to your word. Dear God, give me strength to share your word and your love with those here this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. What a week it has been for us all. A difficult week. Lockdown number three is set to continue for the foreseeable future. Schools are closed. Exams cancelled, mostly. Furlough continues for some, unemployment for others. Covid appears to be raging through our society. Our friends and family are getting sick, key workers are exhausted and we are anxious. It would be so easy for us to lock ourselves away, to shut ourselves down and to lose sight of our faith in these times. We have just listened to Psalm 29 being read, one of David's psalms and appropriate for this morning because it reminds us of God's faithfulness. It reminds us that God is in control. He reigns as king forever. In him, he will give us strength. In him, we will find peace in the midst of this uncertainty. It reminds us also that we must honor him that we must worship him in all situations because he has got this. He has got us 
This situation is not in our control, but it is in his. He is in control. Throughout history, God has revealed his power through his most mighty miracles over nature. We think, for example, of the great flood of Genesis in chapters 6 to 9, and he promises to continually reveal his power to us. Paul urges us to understand just how great God's power is in Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 23. That same power that raised Christ from the dead is available to us to help us daily, day by day by day, and to help us with our problems. But sometimes, especially in difficult situations, in difficult times, times such as these, times of uncertainty and anxiety, we need to revisit our scriptures, to listen to what Jesus said. It is important that while we must lock down physically, we do not lock down spiritually. We must keep our hearts open and our minds focused on the Lord, walking in faith and in love and in awesome wonder. As Psalm 29 lays out for us, we need to worship him, we need to glorify him, honour him, have faith in him. And it's not easy. I turn now to Jesus' Sermon on the Mount and particularly to Matthew chapter 13, verses 10 to 17 and verses 45 to 46. Then the disciples came and asked him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered, To you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to those who have, more will be given, and they will have an abundance. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. The reason I speak to them in parables is that seeing they do not perceive, and hearing they do not listen, nor do they understand. With them indeed is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah that says, You will indeed listen, but never understand, and you will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. Truly I tell you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. As we have just heard, Jesus uses the parables to spell it out in simple terms for us. For those who have, more will be given. But from those who have nothing, even what they have will be taken away. We need to hold on and hold on tight to our faith and the knowledge of the depth of God's love for each of us. Although the parable of the pearl is two verses long and one of the shortest of the parables, it gives us two very clear instructions. We are to take comfort that as children of God, we, each one of us, created by him, are viewed by him as his most precious pearls. He sought us out, he loves us, and he is with us always through the difficult times and through the joyous times. We may be isolating, but we are never alone. We are also to treat our faith, our lives in Christ, as the most precious pearl that we must seek out, hold on to, obey, and have faith in. We've got to cling to it, to fight for it, in times of difficulty, in times of great joy, and in times when there's not much happening in our lives, we are to be the merchant seeking the most precious pearl, that of the kingdom of heaven. As we settle into this next phase of lockdown when we cannot meet in church, I think it is important that we hold fast to the lessons of this parable. We need to understand that although we may be isolating, we are never alone. To understand that we are as precious to God as the most precious pearl to the merchant. As we face tough times, 
We are challenged by this lockdown in loneliness, for sickness financially, in grief, in despair. We need to focus on the fact that each of us is our, uh, is our Father's precious pearl and draw strength from that. We need to understand that when we are locked down, we shouldn't lock ourselves out. We shouldn't disconnect from Jesus. We need to keep focused on our desire to make it to the kingdom of heaven. We need to seek out and treat our gift of faith as the precious pearl and continue to work on our lives and our journey in faith, both individually and as a church family. In telling this story, Jesus is both foretelling his death as well as explaining his reason for coming to earth in the form of man so that we can make the sacrifice necessary for our salvation. To understand the significance of this parable and the message concerning us and the kingdom of God, it would be remiss of me not to consider in more detail the importance of Jesus choosing the pearl rather than any, of the, any other kind of gemstone. Well, for me, I love jewellery, and usually the more sparkly the better. However, pearls are a favourite of mine because of their purity, their classic beauty. I have lots of pearls. I have them either adorning my clothes or my jewellery, but they are, I am sorry to say, not the real thing. They are the imitation variety, thick. From a distance, they look okay, but on closer inspection, they have none of the classic, pure, genuine beauty of a true pearl and are certainly far from taking the form of a precious pearl. Pearls are an incredibly unique gemstone. While most precious gems are formed in the ground surrounded by rocks, pearls are the only gemstone created inside a living creature. An important point to remember as we consider this parable. So how does a pearl become a pearl? Pearls are made when a small irritant finds its way inside an oyster or mollusk, this can be a grain of sand or a piece of shell, but is more typically a little parasite. The oyster protects itself by layering the, the irritant with nacre or mother of pearl. And nacre is the substance that coats the irritant and the layers build up over time until out of pain and suffering, it forms an object of great beauty inside the oyster, the pearl. Depending on the size and shape of the irritant, the resulting pearl can take on a wide variety of shapes and sizes. It takes many years for enough nacre to build up for the pearl to be finished. In a similar way, we can be compared to that grain of sand or that parasite in a spiritual context due to our nature and to our sins. In Genesis chapter 2 verse 7 it says, Then the Lord formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed life into the man and the man became a living person. However, because God loves us, we are continually covered by the blood of Jesus Christ, just like the oyster covering the irritant with nacre. And gradually, we become a thing of great beauty in Christ, a precious pearl clothed in the righteousness of him who bought us. What a comforting thought. Just like the pearl covering the irritant with nacre, we are continually covered and protected by the blood of Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 3, verses 24 to 26, it says, For everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, in his grace, freely makes us right in his sight. He did this through Jesus Christ when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. But the pearl has no real worth inside the shell of the oyster. The shell must be opened and the pearl revealed for its value to be recognised and the price paid. Similarly, while we remain within our shell, not opening our hearts and our lives to Christ, living a faithless life, locking ourselves down, locking our hearts down, keeping our shells closed, we prevent our Father from opening us up to become his most precious pearls. By having faith, we allow him to open us up to a life with him and in him, an eternal life in his glorious kingdom. That is why it is so important for us to remember during this season of lockdown that we do not lock our Father out. We must keep our shells open. We must open our hearts and our minds to his word, to his love, to walk in faith 
and to allow us to shine as his most precious pearls in this most difficult of times. In Ephesians chapter 2, verses 13, it says, But now you have been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you have been brought near to him through the blood of Jesus Christ. God's grace is essential to us understanding this parable. The merchant is willing to buy the pearl at an exorbitant cost. No one can buy salvation on the kingdom of God or eternal life for themselves, no matter how financially rich you may be. Grace would not be grace if we were able to barter with God. We have nothing that is of any value in purchasing such a priceless gift from God. We do not choose. Christ seeks us, just like the merchant seeking the pearl, the shepherd seeking the sheep. He seeks the sinner, selects us, and pays the ultimate price for us, his life. He departed from heaven and arrived on earth to complete this mission. In this sense, the message of the parable is twofold. We are all precious pearls of our Father. He is the merchant seeking us out, loving us, valuing us so much that he paid the ultimate sacrifice for us by dying on the cross. Such was his love for us. However, we are also the merchant in this story. We are the merchant seeking the most precious pearl of everlasting life in the kingdom of God, both as individuals and as a church. We, as brothers and sisters in Christ, are the merchant seeking the precious pearl of eternal life in the kingdom of God by living our lives in obedience to our Redeemer. Living a life that is pure and faithful, following his commandments, loving each other as he loves us, willing to make whatever sacrifice he requires for us to discover the most precious pearl. We are to be like Ruth, seeking without question, relying on our faith alone to live our lives, unwavering, putting all of our trust in our Redeemer. In the midst of this pandemic and all of the hurt and the pain and the upheaval it has caused, that is not easy. Being a Christian is not easy. It's not an easy route to take, an easy life to choose. We have very clear rules to follow in the commandments. We still experience pain and hurts and difficulty. However, the peace and joy and love we get from our faith and the relationship we have with our Lord through good times and bad is without doubt the most precious pearl we have in our lives. And we must never lose sight of that. We may act as a merchant in aspects of our lives, but not necessarily in the way that Jesus meant when he told this story. We may seek material things. We seek to make new rules that suit our agenda. We seek new cars, new gadgets, more money, popularity, self-satisfaction. We seek things, but we don't always seek him. In our lives and today's world, seeking worldly treasure, material possessions, social standing can sometimes be more important than seeking Jesus in our lives. Our faith and our Christianity is not seen as the ultimate, the perfect, the unobtainable treasure, because in society the emphasis is so far away from faith and so fixed on worldly goods. COVID-19 has shifted the focus on all our lives. It has and continues to cause hurt and havoc and destruction and devastation. But we must hold tight to our faith in God, who is in control of all things, as affirmed in Psalm 29. We as Christians in lockdown need to hold firm, stand tall, live our lives and proclaim the priceless nature of our faith. We need to joyfully share the good news of Christ our Lord. We need to live a life where he is our priority, celebrating our precious gift. As a church, we need to practice what we preach, reaching out, loving each other, acting as the merchant, with our eyes firmly fixed on seeking the precious pearl that is the kingdom of God. We need to reorder our priorities so that in all things, Christ comes before possessions. We need to live our lives with the hunger of the merchant desperate to find the precious pearl, knowing that when we find it, we will be able to immediately recognize it, to be ready for when our Saviour returns. 
In Revelations chapter 17, verse 15, Jesus says, Lord, I will come as unexpectedly as a thief. Blessed are all who are watching me, who keep their clothing ready, so they will not have to walk around naked and ashamed. Let us use this time of lockdown as a time of reflection. When we look inside ourselves as Christians or indeed the church, are we living our lives like the pure pearl, the genuine article? Or on closer inspection, do our lives and Christian service reflect the pearls in my clothes and jewellery? It looks okay from a distance, but when you get up close and take a good look, on closer inspection it's easy to see that it's imitation. Does how we live our lives reflect the pure love of Jesus, a life lived in service to him and for him? Or are we more focused on living our lives, pleasing others, doing what we want, what is right in our minds and according to our rules, not his? Do we value our faith and Christian life and our walk with Jesus as the merchant in the parable valued the most precious pearl? Are we prepared to pursue it with the same hunger, the same desire, the same sacrifice as he did? Or are we happy to trundle along in the general direction, hoping that if we're lucky we'll find it, not that bothered if we don't? How open are our shells? Have we allowed God to open them fully, revealing us as his most precious jewel, rejoicing in the fact that in his eyes we have inestimable value? We are loved by him more than it is possible for us to ever imagine loving or being loved. Knowing that he loved us so much, he paid the ultimate price and made the ultimate sacrifice by dying on the cross for us so that we would have eternal life with him in his glorious kingdom. Or do our shells open and close to him depending on what situation we are facing, what season of our lives we are in? Are we more likely to open them wider when life is going well and close them a little bit more each time something happens that hurts us or makes us angry or when we think he isn't listening or when we pray and he doesn't answer in the way that we want him to because we think we know better than he does. We are precious and perfect and priceless in his sight. He sought us out and paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. No matter how unworthy we might feel, how we think we don't deserve it, how we think we aren't good enough, how anxious we are, how afraid we might feel, this parable tells us that our God loves each of us and looks on us as his most precious pearl. But as I said earlier, this parable also challenges us. We must look on our faith and our gift of eternal life as our most precious pearl and treat it with the same level of importance and cherish it and protect it in the way that he does us. We must live as the merchants, seeking not material possessions, but seeking always the kingdom of God, trusting in him, having faith in him, focusing on him, to ensure that when we meet him, we will instantly recognize him as our most precious pearl. Psalm 29 reminds us to worship him, glorify him, praise him. He is in control. These coming weeks, we need to remember to have faith, to open our shells, to reveal ourselves as his most precious pearl, and to never stop seeking the precious pearl of eternal life in the kingdom of heaven. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we enter this third lockdown, and all of the difficulties and challenges that we face. Help us to use this time individually and collectively as a church family to reflect on our lives, to take comfort from the love that you have for us, us, your most precious pearls, but also to reflect on how we, as your precious pearls, can seek you, can share your love, and can focus on you when we are struggling and when we are filled with joy. Help us to use this time, Father, to grow in love and in faith with you and to take comfort from being loved by you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, we thought that uh, 
2020 would be a relief to put behind us, but we have already not had a good start to 2021. We ask for your help now, Lord, as we begin this new year. Lord God, we pray for the world, a world in the grip of this COVID pandemic. Lord, as the cases now go beyond the peak of last year, we pray for the safety of our most fragile people, our most vulnerable people. We pray, Lord, for the elderly, for those who are already sick and maybe going under treatment like uh, cancer patients. We pray for those who have underlying health issues and conditions. Lord, we ask that you protect those whose life will be most in danger if they pick up this virus. Protect them from getting it. We pray, Lord, for those who have already uh, been infected. We pray for those who are in hospital. We pray, Lord, for their recovery. May they be returned to health and may they turn to you in the process, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you help us, that you help the general public at this time. Help them to grasp the enormity of this challenge. The challenge that poses our society, Lord. Help them to grasp the responsibility that they have to behave responsibly, to take precautions that will help keep them safe and others safe and help keep this virus under control. We pray, Lord, also at the same time for the mental health of all people. Lord, help us all as a society look out for one another in the midst of these restrictions. Help us to do what we can to improve, to care for each other and our mental health. Lord, we pray also for the frontline NHS workers especially, Lord. We know many folk who are at the cold face, who are uh, intensely showing up for work in order to save lives and putting themselves in harm's way as they do it. Lord, we ask that you protect their own health, physical, mental and spiritual. And as they spend their energy, Lord, doing good for others, as they often make really difficult decisions along the way, Lord, we ask that you protect them, protect their families as well. Help them to keep going. Give them the strength to do their work and give them opportunities for real rest. We pray also, Lord, for the whole NHS system. We pray that it may not be overwhelmed by the load. May it keep going in the face of the high volumes of sick people, Lord. Protect that system. We also pray, Lord, for other aspects of our society. We pray for our economy and our employment rates. Our economy and our employment is being impacted by this virus, Lord. And added to that, Brexit is also becoming a very real and a very complicated issue and transition. Lord, we ask that you help our businesses, our farmers, are those involved in the food trade, our economy. Lord, we pray for the livelihoods of those who rely on normal business conditions and who are very much under threat at the moment, if not already heavily impacted. Lord, we ask that you give them opportunities to keep their businesses going, to put bread on their tables and to protect them against poverty. Again, Lord, as we look to this turbulent year ahead, we ask that you help us, those who are blessed with much, to look out for and to support those around us who are or will suffer during this year. Give us opportunities as a church, give us opportunities as individuals, Lord. Prompt us to search out opportunities where we can show compassion we can show God's love, your love. We can show the selflessness that your son displayed, Jesus. Lord, help us to love you in this world. 
Help us to shine out to others and love others, especially in these difficult times. Lord, we ask all these names and the, all these prayers in the special, the precious name of your Son, our Saviour and Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. As a final blessing, I say the peace of God which passes all understanding may keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Our, our closing hymn today is I Believe, which is based on the Apostles' Creed. So say thank you again for Mel for preaching, but thank you for, for joining us in our service today. I pray that you uh, uh, all do your best to stay close to God, to remember that you are that precious pearl, uh, and to also remember that you are to be in search of God's kingdom as part of it. So may you be blessed as you continue in your faith. I invite you now to go in peace, to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you.